All right, it is time to finally upgrade the speakers on my Luma Duty. So this would apply to like an F-150, 250, 350, 450, the best that I can tell on the Super Duties 17 plus. But what I'm doing today is I am swapping out for these JL Audio 6x9, 690TXs for the front doors. Previously, I replaced the rear door speakers because about a month after I bought the truck, one of the speakers popped and I did not want to deal with Ford warranty at the time. It was just easier during COVID to replace it myself and I put a nicer speaker in. So let's jump right into it and get these speakers swapped out. So to get the door panel off, we've got a number of screws in here. We've got two on the bottom, two here. I believe there's one up in the sail panel. So we're gonna start by pulling them out of the bottom, then we'll pull this cover off and get that sail panel. You need a seven millimeter because that's uh, their favorite size. And these are just coarse thread. They go into little plastic anchors. To get our grab pull handle off, there's a small little opening here on the bottom to get your trim tool in, and then you can pop it off. So as you're popping that off, your retainer drops in on this side. You don't wanna pull this side out, you'll break that guy off. Your plastic tabs holding it in. Again, your two screws or bolt heads. To get our sail panel off, we're gonna come in from over here, give it a little pry. A little metal, a little plastic, holding it in. And another screw right up here. So there's the two screws that hold the handle portion and there's two more here under this plastic clip. So there's not a lot of room to get in here. You gotta work yourself gently pop this one out, there we go. There's our two plastic clips and our two more. Now we can move on to popping the door panel off. Use our trim tool, pry the plastic clips back. Once you can get your fingers under there, you can work your way up. And then we're gonna have to disconnect our handle get up and over our lock mechanism plus our lock switch and our window switch so up and over clip at the top always try not to pull away too forcefully all right so this part is where a lot of folks are going to wind up struggling much like i did if you look at the back side of the release mechanism you can see these little arrows here what they're indicating is to push down on this little plastic piece right there. Once you do that, this will tilt out of the door. Nice and simple, you won't break anything. Your other connectors, your gray connector, you've got this little push here, this connector up here, same thing, little push tab, and the last one there, little push tab. Makes this pretty easy. Now to pull the speaker off, the same thing as the other, little clips, we're just gonna push in, pull it out the bottom, and then it's got four seven millis on it. Let's not mix these guys up with all of our other ones for the rest of the door. And the speaker might be stuck up against the door. There's little rubber isolators behind there. You can see that it screws into to help absorb some of the vibration. I'm gonna be adding some sound deadening to my door while I'm at it, so that hopefully I don't get any squeaks or rattles after we get the speaker out. Now let's go compare this speaker to our new ones. So I decided to go with a set of JL Audio. These are the C2 690TX three-way speakers. I recognize that this isn't a three-way speaker, but in the long run, my hearing is abysmal. Had a pretty bad accident when I was younger, lost a ton of hearing in both ears. 
So I'm not going for audio file here. I'm just going for better. I already replaced my rear door speakers. About a month after I bought the truck, one of them popped um, with the C2 series JL. So these will match the rears. If I remember correctly, I, I think those ones are coaxials versus the uh, three-way. And I think they're six and a halfs. I'll throw the speakers up on the screen so that if you decide to do a match set, you can do all four as well. And I got these from Crutchfield or Crutchfeld because they offer the connectors and the brackets and everything to make this job fairly simple. The rear door speakers were quite easy. Got your template if you're going to be cutting out, screws and connectors if you're going to use theirs. And I am going to be powering these off of the factory amp. It's yet to be seen if that amp is going to last. So far with the rears, I haven't noticed any issues. Comment down below if I'm going to see issues later and maybe you can prep me to fix this before I have to. So right off the bat, obviously three-way speaker. It's going to be quite different than a single here, but look at the magnet size there. This is a much higher quality speaker than what this guy was. You know, no offense to Ford, but come on, a little better sound for us old guys with bad hearing would be cool. So we've got this extension ring. The factory speakers have foam around them to line up with the door panel. We'll see if this is gonna fit on the door panel or not. According to Crutchfield, it's all an easy installation when you use their trim pieces. Got more screws. I think I'll be using the factory screws if they all line up. This is the Metra 825606. I'll put everything in the com or in the links down below so you know what speakers I used. Nothing stresses me out more than a rattle in my door. So what I'm doing here is adding some two-sided tape to make sure that when I put that speaker in there, it's gonna be stuck. You know what does calm me down though? My 15th cup of coffee for the day. Yep, that's good. So what I'm using here is the screws that came in the kit. I cut them down so that they wouldn't stick out of the back. And then I'm using the little metal clips to hold them in. Make sure you do this by hand so you don't wind up poking a hole through your speaker. So this step is totally optional. I'm gonna add sound deadening around on these hollow panels just because I think it will help even just a little bit. I can't stand rattles. So, yeah. Again, this part is totally optional. I had this sound deadening material left over from another project. So, hey, why not, right? I went around the door, tapped on the door, and just found every little spot that I could get it to fit. While I was in there, I also made sure that that vapor barrier was sealed up nice and tight. It actually had a couple of loose spots that I found while I was in there. All right, now that the door is going to be hopefully a bit quieter. Time to pop our speaker in. I ran the wire harness through the opening in the Metra adapter. I added some butyl tape, like you saw, to the back. So we get a good, nice, quiet seal here. Okay, and we're lined right up with our factory harness. Snap that together. And I'm going to add a little bit of zip tie, or I'm gonna add a zip tie to the harness right here to hold everything down and flat. All right, before you put the door back on, this seal here in this upper corner likes to pop off. And it's just an air seal around this alignment pin. We're gonna go back together in the reverse order, starting with our release mechanism. Make sure your handle's not popped out. Then it comes in from the bottom Clips in, locks in at the top, double check that it works. Now we can move back onto all our little harnesses. And then there is a ridge up here. You gotta drop the door panel into, make sure you get your lock rod through. And push into the groove up top. There we go. Once you get into the groove. Pointy end into the grooves. On the top side. 
double check that your lock rod goes up and down. Then this side will drop into that alignment hole. And then you can clip. So before we screw the door in, we're gonna turn the radio on, make sure that the speaker turns on. It's all downhill from here. Get those screws back in the door, the trim back on, go for a ride and enjoy your new speakers.